Rarely blind. You got a secret now. Understand how little it costs. The Maritimes tonight. In the news, the West Ray Inquiry. The miners accuse the government of politicking. The Maritimes tonight bids a fond farewell. And in sports, we'll meet Pat Day, the most successful jockey in Breeders' Cup history. Good evening, everyone. I'm Frank Cameron. Good evening. I'm Doug Saunders. The government's just playing politics. That's what some people are saying about the inquiry into the West Ray mine disaster. Nova Scotia's Attorney General wants to postpone the inquiry. He wants all possible criminal charges in the disaster to clear the courts before the inquiry goes ahead. But a lawyer for the Miners Union says the government just wants to delay the inquiry until after the next election. Dan O'Connell reports. It's been more than five months since the explosion at Westray killed 26 miners. Justice Peter Richard was appointed to head up a provincial inquiry into the disaster. And at the same time, the RCMP have been investigating the tragedy for criminal negligence and charges may come out of that investigation. That's why seven mine managers launched a court challenge to have the inquiry quashed. Yesterday, the Attorney General filed these documents in court saying the inquiry should be postponed until the courts are finished with the matter. It happens to be the right and the proper path to take. The, the Attorney General says he's concerned about possible criminal prosecutions. Our uh, stance has been uh, that uh, we are prepared to um, adjust to the process in any way which would ensure that the uh, criminal charges uh, could proceed properly. That's just fine with the families of the victims. Well, the families are of the view that if, in fact, the public inquiry will jeopardize future criminal or quasi-criminal proceedings that, yes, the, uh, those proceedings should take precedence over the inquiry at this stage. The inquiry is being put off indefinitely if the suggestion of the uh, Attorney General is accepted. This lawyer representing the Miners Union says the government wants the inquiry put on hold until after the next election. Are we going to prevent future deaths? Are we going to have a coal mining industry in the province that can operate safely or, or not? The inquiry is very important to that. If this is put off indefinitely, all those issues are buried. And, and tho those issues should not be put off, and they should be aired. And if there's a provincial election that uh, people are worried about, it, too bad. I have nothing uh, to be ashamed of, nothing to hide. And, uh, and uh, uh, the important thing is that the, the proper uh, uh, legal decisions are made, not the proper political decisions. And the opposition can, uh, can say what they want, but I suspect that uh, anyone that really looks at their approach would find there would be a touch of politics in it. The whole matter should be cleared up next week when the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court decides if the inquiry will go ahead. Dan O'Connell, CBC News, Halifax. A man from Ontario went on trial in a Nova Scotia courtroom today. He's charged with sexually assaulting two children last summer. The children had been drugged with chloroform as they slept in a tent next to their parents. George Garland reports. 33-year-old Ariel Bellasillo is charged with two counts of committing sexual assault through administering a stupefying chemical, namely chloroform, and in committing sexual assault caused bodily harm to two children. The Crown's first witness, the father of an 11-year-old girl and an 8-year-old boy, identified Bellasillo as a man he dragged from his children's tent early in the morning of August the 1st. The father, who can't be identified, says he awoke around 2 o'clock in the morning to rustling noises. Upon entering the children's tent, he says he saw a man on top of his daughter, a man making moaning sounds and moving his hips up and down. The father also said he smelt a sweet, sickly vapor and later discovered a bottle marked chloroform. He also told the court about becoming enraged, striking the accused several times, dragging him from the tent and tying him up. He later discovered he had broken his own hand, apparently from beating upon the accused. Testimony was also given about the condition of the children after they were taken from their tent. Both were vomiting and in a stupor. At hospital, their mother took her son to a washroom and came back upset after noticing bruises on his penis. A medical examination of her daughter showed no signs of injury. The mother took the stand this afternoon and recounted much the same story as her husband. She identified Bella Sillo in court as the man she first met face to face outside her tent while he was sprawled on the ground. The trial continues tomorrow with testimony expected from the RCMP and a doctor. The defense says it will be calling one witness, presumably Bella Sillo. George Garland, CBC News.
Fort Hawkesbury. A small group of people showed up at a preliminary hearing in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia today to silently protest sexual abuse against children. Paul Douglas Robson from Westville was in court today. He's charged with sexually assaulting a two-year-old. Members of the local group called Child Safe say they want people to know how often assaults are occurring in their towns and cities. So we can offer support to the, to the, uh, the families and the victims. Um, and to make, you know, to make a statement that uh, things have to change and people have to become aware of what's going on. Late this afternoon, Robson was committed to stand trial in Nova Scotia Supreme Court in January. A former Halifax bank teller has pleaded guilty to stealing thousands of dollars from a customer's account. Margaret Baker took more than $400,000 from the account over the last six and a half years. She took the money from the account of businessman Stanley Havel. Baker pleaded guilty in Halifax County Court today. She will be sentenced on December 10th. Police have identified a 27-year-old man who drowned in North Sydney today. He's William Robert Coleman of Sydney. The search for a second victim has been called off for the night. Carol Ann Drake reports. A 27-year-old Sydney man drowned early this morning near the Northern Yacht Club in North Sydney. The body was found around 9.30, close by where the victim was last seen. A neighbor says he heard voices. One was the victim crying out for help, but when he got to him, it was too late. Yeah, I uh, heard some noises outside, and uh, they woke me, and I went to the window, didn't see anything, just, you know, every two or three minutes you'd hear a, a loud um, holler type thing. And uh, I went back and forth two or three times, and then finally I went up, I heard another one. I was looking out the window, and uh, I heard help. And then once I heard help, I knew there was something wrong. RCMP believe two people may have drowned. Search and rescue teams are combing the area for another body. No one saw a second person. RCMP will continue their investigation. We're trying to determine now where he, start, where he started out from, where this boat came from, and uh, there's some indication that there were two people. And uh, at this moment, the underwater search is continuing. The victim was believed to be in an unsafe two-and-a-half-meter fiberglass boat at the time of the accident. This amazes me because I'm a boater myself and I just can't understand what a guy would be out there, you know, that hour of the morning and this time of the year, you know, in a small little boat like that. RCMP are looking for the owner of the small boat to retrace the victim's steps before the accident. They are asking for any information about the case. Carol Ann Drake, CBC News, North Sydney. The Cape Breton Hospital will not hold a public inquiry into its policies and procedures. The psychiatric hospital has been under heavy criticism after four of its patients committed suicide in the past 16 months. Cynthia Kent reports. The Cape Breton Hospital has been having its share of trouble lately. In the past 16 months, four patients have committed suicide. Now some people, including Liberal MLA Russell McKinnon, are calling for an independent inquiry into the overall operation of the hospital. But the hospital says that's not necessary. I do not uh, see the need for, uh, for a public inquiry. McKeegan says the suicide rate of patients at the Cape Breton Hospital is similar to the rate at Dartmouth Psychiatric Hospital. He also says while suicides are tragic, they are expected. And, and I think you have to look at, uh, at suicide as, as a uh, cause of death in the especially of psychiatry. And suicide as a cause of death in psychiatry can be likened to, uh, to a patient who uh, has cancer and dies as a medical patient. The hospital is doing an internal review of the most recent suicide, and the Department of Health is sending an independent consultant to take part in that. But those results will not be made public. Cynthia Kent, CBC News, Sydney. When we return, Class action. You can still catch a taste of summer at Swiss Chalet. For just $5.45, enjoy a meaty half rack of our oh-so-succulent side ribs, along with your choice of crispy golden french fries, a garden-fresh chalet salad, or a piping hot baked potato. All for just $5.45. So hurry down to Swiss Chalet because the late summer rib special gets blown away November 18th.
no-name products in the easy-to-spot packages. Hundreds of items that can add up to big savings on your grocery bill. There's no name like it. No name's the name for you. There's no name like it. For value. Available at Save Easy. I read the Sunday edition probably will take me an hour and a half to get everything done because I read it from A to Z. Well, I like that there's a lot of um, local news about things that are happening. There's a very big human interest factor in it. I get a kick out of Nick Zink. Daily news. Daily news. First edition covers your problems. How do you feel about competing against your dad? I love it. How come? Because I want to beat him. <laughs> I don't know where we could cut. There really isn't any room to maneuver in the budget at all. He's lucky it's not one of my grandchildren because he never would have made it to that court. Business has certainly picked up since the range almost stopped. <laughs> your towns, your stories. First edition of CBC News for Nova Scotia. If you want to know where you're located, geographically, I mean, get hold of a radio, find the Citizens Band, tune in to the CBC. CBC. Find out about your place in space, get closer to the lay of the land, take a chance on public radio, tune in to the Citizens Band, go public. Get involved, be aware, go public. It's yours, it's mine, take your share of the air. 90.5 FM in Metro. Kensington High School in PEI is being closed. For the past four years, students have complained the school was making them sick. They talked and talked, and yesterday, they finally walked. Today, the school board agreed to keep the school closed until the problem is solved. Jennifer Nunn reports. Say the air is safe, or the air isn't safe. Is that a good environment for our children, a safe, healthy environment, or not? Parent after parent voiced their concern at a meeting of the school board last night. They don't want their children going to a school that makes them sick. None of the parents, teachers, or students at tonight's meeting wanted to blame the school board for what's happened. All they wanted were answers to their questions. When is the problem going to be solved? And what should they do with their children in the meantime? The answer to one of those questions came early this morning. The school is being closed. Today, students reacted to the decision. They could have done this through the summer on summer break and especially being in grade 12 wouldn't affect our marks but now since we'll be at a school every day counts. It's going to be awkward for us. We don't know really where we're going yet or what's going to happen to us. It's going to be hard to try to figure out you know how to catch up on all our work and stuff since we're not going to be back to school for such a while. It's going to be hard. School superintendent Dick Noonan says parents can be assured their children won't go back to the school until the problem is solved. Well, they'll be out of the building until the building is safe. Workers were at the school today testing for dust and formaldehyde in the school's air. The results of those tests won't be available for a few weeks. So it's still more testing and more unanswered questions. Tomorrow, the school administration will move to new offices down the road at the old Big Wheels Trucking Company. Then they'll try to decide where to send the students for classes. Jennifer Nunn, CBC News, Kensington. Well, Doug Saunders is next with his last sportscast, but uh, first the weather. We have no jokes tonight. Uh, we're saving them for later. Actually, that's not true, uh, because the joke is that this show really isn't going off the air. We were only kidding. <laughs> and no, we weren't. Mostly cloudy uh, overnight with uh, scattered showers or flurries over mainland Nova Scotia. The low temperatures, 0 to 4. Friday, some showers or flurries in the morning over Nova Scotia, mostly cloudy in PEI, partly sunny skies in the afternoon, highs near 8 degrees. Saturday will be mainly sunny. Look, yes. Jeff, Jeff, don't worry about it. I mean, you can trust us. Is that uh, it's Jeff. I think it is? It's yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. What's he worried about? Uh, he, he, just hang on. Yeah. He just wants to remind us that even though this is our last night, the list is still in effect. It is? I, th I thought we yeah. could read the list. Okay, Jeff, we understand. Yeah? Good man. Okay. Okay. Yeah, hang up on him. <laughs> oh, I've been okay. wanting to do that for years. Yeah, good. And, uh, and if he calls back, we'll just tell the switchboard. If he calls back, uh, please say we've left. Now, here's uh, Doug with the sports. 
Yeah, with my Annapolis, such, Annapolis such Royal shirt. Yeah, the people in Annapolis Royal are really going to be proud of you tonight. Prouder yeah. than they are of you for wearing yeah. that ridiculous tie. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, four games in the National Hockey League tonight. In the third period, Boston leads Los Angeles by a score of 6-1. to one. Also in the third period of play, it is Quebec leading the Rangers by a score of 4-2. to two. two other scores in the second period of play, Philadelphia and Chicago, or Chicago. I'll never get to say that again. Uh, tied at one, obviously, if they've got a goal apiece. And Pittsburgh and St. Louis also tied at one goal apiece. The American Hockey League tonight saw the Halifax Citadels and the Hershey Bears played with three all overtime tie. Thoroughbred racing will be in the spotlight in Florida this Saturday when the annual Breeders' Cup is held at Gulfstream Park. Uh, Pat Day is the most successful jockey in the history of the Breeders' Cup, and we have a feature on him from tonight uh, from Bob Niemeyer. Pat Day is the most successful jockey in the history of the Breeders' Cup, winning $8.1 million in overall purse money. Among his six Breeders' Cup victories, Day has won on front-running champions like Theatrical in the 1987 turf, and he's won with late-charging stretch runners like Unbridled in the 1990 Classic. Breeders' Cup uh, Day, with uh, all that's at stake there, it carries a lot of clout in every category. Uh, uh, for the balloting for Eclipse Awards, for the money won titles, and, and so on and so on. Whether I win or whether I lose, I'm, I'm going out there doing all that I possibly can, doing it to the very best that I, of my ability, and I'm, I'm content with the, with the outcome. This year, Day has an excellent chance to add to his Breeders' Cup trophy case. He will ride the brilliant odds-on favorite Sky Classic in the $2 million turf, where he will be matching skills with the world's best riders. I'm very proud and very happy to be a, a member of the jockey colony, and I applaud each and every person that puts on a pair of white pants and goes out there and participates in the races. I dare say that it's the only, one of the few, if not the only, sport where you could put both uh, the opposing teams in the same room together before or after and, and have it to be the congeniality and, and the courteous uh, nature that you find in the jockey's rooms throughout the world. Unlike other riders, Day arrived at Gulfstream Park very early this week to familiarize himself with the horses and trainers he'll be working with this Saturday. Just another sign of the professionalism that has always been the trademark of Pat Day. Reporting from Gulfstream Park, this is Bob Newmeyer at the Breeders' Cup. All right, in baseball news, two Toronto Blue Jays have been named to the Associated Press All-Star team. So honored were Dave Winfield, the team's designated hitter, and also Roberto Alomar, who was named as the second baseman. In boxing, Toronto's Razor Ruddock has accused fellow Canadian heavyweight Lennox Lewis of taking steroids. Lewis calls that accusation a joke and says he refuses to take a drug test. He's already taken one. The two are scheduled to fight in London this Saturday with the winner to get a shot at the world title. And Boris Spassky has taken the 26th game of his $5 million revenge chess match with American Bobby Fischer. However, Fischer leads the competition nine wins to five, needs only one more to claim the $3.5 million first prize. Are we getting a roll cue here, Milt, or what? We are now. Okay. That's it for sports. And... Uh, what can I tell you? We'll have more of this final edition of the Maritimes tonight. Uh, right after Milt keeps going like this. I know this is against union rules, but there's four. There's Tuesday. So boys. Murray McLaughlin sings the songs of a pioneer, folk songwriter Wade Hemsworth. They're songs to remember, and they are all Canadian. I like them because they're real, and they're some of the best songs and the most touching and affecting songs that uh, that I've ever heard and I'm going home and I'm going home the songs of Wade Hemsworth Tuesday Isn't it about time there was TV fit for adults? Soon there will be. Go boldly where no comedy has gone before. Where I come from is a perfect planet. What about impregnation? I am fully fertile and ready for action. Don't bother to thank Klinger, hon. This is my favorite part. 
Watch Codco season premiere Wednesday, November 11th at 11 p.m. Make it so. This fall, Symphony Nova Scotia hits the road. Communities of this size rarely get an opportunity to benefit from artists of this caliber. This fall, the Seagram Symphony Nova Scotia Anniversary Tour brings a celebration of live orchestral music to many communities in the Maritimes. It's a great audience. It looks like the whole town's out. Every community should be able to hear like what we are able to experience tonight because it's just wonderful. It's the first time I've ever seen Symphony Nova Scotia and I think it's great. I was sitting there thinking, I can't believe I'm in Bridgewater. Please contact Symphony Nova Scotia at 902-421-7311 to find out when the orchestra will be playing in your area. Jeff, I thought I told you not to call us back. Okay, goodbye. Is he still worried Boy, about that he's list? he's really worried about that. You know, we're not going to mention the list. However, what? we do have something to mention here. Your brother in Alaska? No, 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 of course. He's my brother. No. Your, your sister in Pennsylvania. No, I want to tell you a story about uh, the person who is now in our Yarmouth Bureau, Mary Jane Weber. Mary Jane Weber. Yeah, Mary Jane's in town, by the way. I don't know whether she's in the building, but or she's watching the show. As we call that. her, MJ. Mary Jane mm -hmm. uh, made her debut on this very I show. I remember it well. Yes, but it was not her journalistic debut. No, it certainly was not. She was, she got on her cheerleading outfit and did a little skit for us with the pom-poms and mm -hmm. so on. And a lot of people may have forgotten that, but we've just reminded them now. <laughs> Sorry, Mary Jane, it I was, couldn't resist well, it. Wow, rah, 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 sis, boom, ba. Sis, boom, ba, the Maritimes tonight, rah, 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 whatever, whatever years, whatever I've never it was. seen a set of beers, exactly. something like that, I don't now, know. Now, uh, also, the other thing is a lot of people think that, uh, that maybe uh, the weekend news is also being canceled. That is not true. Not true. And we have living proof with us in the studio <laughs> right now, Susan Dunn, is going to be here still remaining on the weekends you know i'll be here yes we want people to stay up late at least on the weekends if they won't stay up late during the week well i stay up on the weekends and i'll watch you okay so, listen okay. I, I think before we go tonight we should uh, look back at some pleasant memories of maritimes tonight what do you say pleasant <laughs> is that what you call it and uh doug i just have one question yeah where do you keep the batteries for that tie the batteries yeah you really want to know yeah right there Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Gee, the I didn't know if you can see too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good night. Good night. So that's our look at sports. Yeah. Who's your ugly friend? Well, that's a monster, Doug. Huh? Frank, I was talking to the monster. Oh, <laughs> frankly, I'm sick of your insults. <laughs> <laughs> good night. Good night. <laughs> Hark! Did I Who hear the sound of a goose in the distance? Well, listen. Last night I mentioned Honky the Christmas Goose. Yes. Uh, it wasn't uh, really. Um, Gump who was we were Gump talking? Gump Worsley. It's really Johnny Bauer, and I found the record. Mm -hmm. I actually, I literally found the record. Well, let's, can we hear some of this? Sure, you want to hear some? Okay. Honky, honky, the Christmas goose. <laughs> so I so fat that he was no Sing along. Goose. That's kind of nice. Honky, honky. How to blow his <laughs> nose. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you, folks, uh, I'll keep the Christmas goes with Doug the Turkey. Uh, tomorrow night, folks, McKay's don't miss the show. Exactly We've got Yan the Yuletide Yak. That's on uh, Maritimes tonight. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> now, as you know, if you're a regular viewer of this show, I've been making references for about a month now to Valentine's Day. And People have been saying, what the heck is so special about oh, Valentine's one, Day? Well, oh, tonight, no, folks, we let the cat oh. out of the bag. The big fella here, Francis Gilmore Cameron, is getting married tomorrow. Which wedding and was this? And before he has a chance to respond to that, I want you to know, seven, Frank, that uh, we've got some people uh, who've got to say a few words to you, so uh, let's roll that tape down. Frank, you watch our monitor. Oh, sure. Okay. Frank Cameron used to say, if at first you don't succeed, kiss. <laughs> well, Frank, you're not following your own advice because you're anything but a quitter. Dear Francis, being one of the few people in the Have Halifax ever been TV Z, news who is of, shall we say, more mature years, my wish is nothing else but dignified. Roses are red, snowbanks are white. May you be as happy on Sunday as on Saturday night. There's no saying, Frank, there's no sense getting older if you don't get wiser. But okay. uh, you've got to have a response to all of that. Now, Frank, there's a lot of people uh, who care about you and are very happy about what's happening tomorrow. Well, that's true. I, I guess I 
I guess they're happy. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, after that, I don't know what to say. I have a tear in my my eye. I think. Well, wipe it away because I. Tell oh, is that, that is that it's just the onions? I probably, guess it's I probably do. my aftershave. But I want to tell you, I talked yeah. to Chris tonight. Yes. Uh, I took her to a farm in Chubinacity earlier in the week. A fellow I know there has a prize bowl. We managed to get the ring, and I think it'll fit your nose just great. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> okay. That's fine. Well, um, I don't know what to say other than uh, thank you for, for this. Uh, I appreciate it. Are we out of time now? We oh, sure yeah. well, I had more. And so are you, Frank. <laughs> I have a speech I wanted to make. And you worked last night. So yes, I did. You I I to see the Super Bowl. No, and I could only see uh, a <laughs> little bit of the Super Bowl. Oh, yes. Well, uh, oh, excuse me. Yes, just, just one second. Uh, if you just bear with us, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Doug uh, doesn't have his microphone yeah. on. Now, do you yeah. want to start that again? You oh, won the bowling tournament. Yes, yes. I mean, I, you won I haven't got time now, Frank. I haven't yeah, got time. time. <laughs> Doug with the sports. Thursday, sunny, clouding over. Well, last night, you may remember that Doug forgot to put on his microphone. And uh, our technicians have dug out enough microphones now to do them for the next week. Are you sure you have... Yeah. yeah Do we have enough there? This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay. And a hidden microphone inside. Yes, of course. And they all work. Yes. <laughs> or they used to. Here's uh, Doug now with the sports. <laughs> ah, sorry, Doug, uh, but it's uh, my turn to do the dishes. <laughs> Good night. Well, uh, that's it? That's it. It's all over. We have often been called uh, golden-throated relics of a bygone era tonight, Frank, and as of tonight, the Maritimes tonight becomes a bygone era. Yeah, and in case... Uh, and we're you... still golden-throated relics. Yes, indeed we are. And in case <laughs> you uh, folks at home are wondering who these people are, I've never seen them before in my life. <laughs> uh, now, this is, this is our crew, uh, many of whom have been with us for uh, the entire run of uh, Maritimes tonight. Uh, they'll all be laid off tomorrow. We just... <laughs> just kidding. No, I was only kidding. I was only kidding. The peasants no, are revolting. No. Yes. Yeah, they sure are. Uh, anyway, uh, we, uh, we will, uh, for, for the viewers in Nova Scotia, of course, uh, we're going to be uh, on the 5.30 show. Some of these people, by the way, are, are associated with the uh, 5.30 program. And uh, we will, uh, I guess, uh, if late night news ever returns to CBC, we won't be here. <laughs> yeah. And I, no. I, I think we should point out for one last time, Frank, this will be the 1,000th time we've done this, that not only is this a sad night because the Maritimes tonight is going off the air, but it's also a sad day because you had to shoot your dog. I, I did. I did, no. yeah. yeah. Was, yeah. It, was he mad? Well, he wasn't too happy. <laughs> <laughs> Our signature, folks. So uh, it's, uh, it's good night and goodbye. Uh, we will be cropping up, of course, uh, on the TV screens uh, from time to time. Actually, starting Monday, uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be on the 530 show. So, uh, but it's been, uh, it's been a great run, and uh, we certainly appreciate all these people back here, because without them, this show would not have gotten on the air. And, of course, without you fans who have been nothing if not loyal, uh, this show wouldn't have been the success it's been. So thanks to all of you, and so long. So long, everybody. Bye. Bye. This is CBC Television. No, it's not Spain. It's not Portugal. Nor is it Mexico. It's Ontario, and a favorite spot for bullfighting fans. No one gets hurt, not even the bulls. They wear a Velcro vest. Join us for bullfighting Canadian style on the season premiere of On the Road Again at our new time, Tuesday at 7. I'm eight months pregnant, Jack. On Street Legal. I'm about to have our baby alone. Will this be an awakening for Chuck? Your attitude's gonna change or I want you out of here. The season premiere of Street Legal, Friday at a new time. Just say the word, Sonny Boy. Join host Bill Langstroth for Jubilee Years, a fond look back at the sing-along gang and Don Messer's Jubilee. Hey, boy, what a way to start a show. Jubilee Years, premiering Saturday.